Um, yeah. I worked in the toddler room, and the, there was like one white doll, one black doll, one brown doll. Uh, one doll. Yeah, they sell them in sets. Yeah, yes, and I was do. very um, pleased about that. The, pre the so preschool has been awesome. diverse, trying to culturally diversify their fake food. They got that's a grant to be able to buy all new things. So now I never even thought about that until you just said that. I've never even considered that. We got all their leftovers when they did that, but I just, my program has no budget. The leftovers. She shares a budget with preschool, and preschool refuses to give them any money, so. Oh, yeah, we have all the so just a reminder, if you haven't found it already, there's a table with art supplies. We invite you to grab some paint, grab a hexagon, make your pretty picture, make your request for a safer, safer community alternative ways. <laughs> uh, yes, and then put it on the wall over there. Go ahead, get creative. I'm going to be uh, drawing a building of people uh, like hosing out their own fires without firefighters. I think that oftentimes when police respond to situations where someone's having a, a mental health crisis, um, they often make the situation worse and end up escalating it. And I don't think they should be responding with guns and with um, this attitude towards um, like arresting people. And I think that the people who should be responding to those situations are people who have actually training in um, mental health crisis response. They should be mental health workers, social workers, people who are unarmed, who can show up and actually help to de-escalate the situation. Ro, I'm a person of color and I want to feel comfortable calling for help, knowing help is coming, not judgment, prejudice, prejudices, prejudices, and criticisms. <laughs> um, so I personally do not feel safe and comfortable when cops are around. Okay. Um, I mean, I just automatically assume that no matter what it is that I'm calling the cops for, in one way or another, I'm going to get blamed. And it's happened, like, growing up. Like, I, even in the school system mostly, you know, no matter what was happening, I always got pinpointed and I always got called out as a kid causing trouble or the one being bad or whatever it was. Um... And I mean, and I do have a few stories that I had shared with someone over there about that, about being called out in the same sentence. Not they, they told me I was a leader, and then told me that not only do I need to behave so that other kids are good, but if other kids are bad, I'm getting in trouble for it because I'm the leader. So they're like, so if they're bad, you're gonna get in trouble because you're the leader and you're supposed to. And I'm just like, doesn't I don't think it works like that. Like I was in elementary school, and because of the trauma that I had already experienced, I thought about things a little more deeply and I was just like no that doesn't I don't think that makes sense and I think I started to realize at a super young age that like oh this is going to be a theme like this is I, I I know that like the black cloud went over my head very early in life and just followed me through the school system and I did have you know and um I've had that those experiences with police um and it's just like and it's like you People who fight this movement and this idea of abolishing the police, um, most of the time, those people have never had that uncomfortable experience with the police, and they, or in life in general. Like, they've never, like, I literally was shopping in Walmart for this rally and was constantly being aware of my body language so that I didn't look like I might be trying to steal because I am assuming they're looking at me like that already because of the color of my skin. And that's just how I live my life. And it's almost in, uh, in, um, involuntary thing. 
um, you kind of can't help but to act that way. Sure. Um, I think I wanted to make sure to highlight the ways that the privatization of water is a big problem throughout the world and and in the United States for those of us living in the US many most I've lived in several places around the US and drinking water is not safe in a lot of the places and sometimes we don't even know it um, and so for me safety is bodily like one form of that is bodily safety and being able to have um, to not get sick from drinking water. Yeah, it's just instead of policing and criminalizing behavior, we want to recognize each other, support each other, and resources. I put, uh, there's no safety without affordable housing. I just see the use of police force as like a chainsaw trimming rose bushes as far as just like taking care of public safety. It's imagining a community and its safety without police. Yes! Great! Who has another phrase 
of what brings us here today. All right, we're going to move our bodies, and you tell us what you're seeing in the theme of what we're doing today. Make sense? Got to be loud, though, because I can't uh, repeat anymore. Same ground, equal ground. Driving while black, or sitting on a bench while black, or eating in a restaurant while black, nobody calls anybody.